Hey family, welcome back to the True Jalo YouTube channel. True Jalo uplifts stories and storytellers that speak truth in pursuit of justice in service of love. So I'm making this video in March. I'm not sure when you're watching it, but that is when I made it. And so I want to say happy Women's History Month to all of you. And if it's not March, then go ahead and celebrate women anyway. Uh, and we've got to celebrate women all year round, but I especially wanted to share these incredible women with you in honor of Women's History Month. So these women are actors and writers and directors who worked their tails off in some amazing films in 2021. So a little disclaimer, which is that I'm calling this some badass women of 2021, but a couple of the films actually aren't going to be released in theaters and online uh, or in streaming until 2022. But I'm counting it as 2021 because the films were wrapped and finished and ready to be released in 2021. So here they are, my list of badass women in film and TV that you may have missed in 2021. Together Together stars Ed Helms from The Office and Patty Harrison. Now, Ed Helms, his character decides that he wants to have a baby. He's a single man and Patty Harrison agrees to be his surrogate. Of course, the character she's playing agrees to be his surrogate. And it's this lovely film about their relationship. There are a lot of intergenerational themes here, but what it means when two people of different ages kind of come together and conflict, but also find reasons to love each other. Uh, Harrison is Vietnamese American. She's an actor. She's a writer. She does improv. Patty Harrison is also a trans woman. And this is one of the things that I freaking love about this movie so much is that she's playing a woman. And I just love that the director made this choice. We watch her through her whole pregnancy and she completely pulls it off. Now, the director, Nicole Beckwith, is also a major badass of 2021 and more. She's, all, she's a playwright. She's a poet. She is absolutely a director to watch. You can see Together Together on Hulu, Amazon, and on Apple. Next up is Hacks. This one is a little more well known, but if you haven't seen it, this is a great show to just sit and binge. It's funny. It's heartwarming. Jean Smart is an incredible actor, but here she really gets to shine because she's the lead in this show. The show is built around her character. Now, Jean Smart plays this celebrity stand-up comedian who has to fight to maintain her career. She's getting older. Her agent is trying to start to kind of push her out of the career and she is feisty and she's still great. And so she refuses to be pushed out. Shout out to Licia Aniello, who's the co-creator of the show. She directed six episodes of the 10 episodes of the first season. So you can watch Hacks on HBO Max. Next up is one of my very favorites on the list. And that was honestly a hard thing to choose because truly these are all so good and you should see them all. But this is called We Are Lady Parts. And if you haven't seen this, what you doing with your life? It's such a great show. So it's a comedy television series. It's all women, all Muslim punk rock band in the UK. <laughs> the uh, All of the actors play their own instruments. Some of them had to learn the instruments for the show. They all have incredible chemistry together. Um, they're hilarious. Each of these band members are very, very specific specific uh, personalities. And so watching them have to come together and work together on this band is so great. I love myself this non-conformist representation. So Muslim women doing punk rock is just the best ever. The show is created and written by badass director, create show creator, writer, Nita Manzoor. Uh, the first season only has six episodes, so you can definitely binge this show. It is so well worth it. It's on Peacock and I will apologize right now because I know I've already just told you I think three or four different platforms and I know this gets expensive 
but especially this one because it's only six episodes just i think peacock has like a free a one month free get the free trial watch we are like lady parts and if you love it like i love it then shout out these folks on twitter on instagram and we should see lots more of them all right, now I know that the last few years have been really, really rough for all of us. And this film is a tough one, I'll be honest. Um, it takes on a really challenging subject, which is a school shooting. But it's really, really, really well done. And Martha Plimpton and Ann Dowd are incredible in it. If you are an actor, if you are a director, this one is worthwhile watching even simply for the craft of it and watching how they give these incredible performances that are wrought with uh, emotion and challenges. This really essentially takes place in one room where two couples whose children experienced a school sh shooting um, come together in kind of a, a mediation session. It is powerful. Um, they're, they bring these kind of very quiet, heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching performances and authenticity to this work. It is tackling a very tough subject, but you should watch Mass. I forgot to say the name of it. You've seen it on the video, but you can watch it on Amazon, on iTunes, and Google Play. All right, all of the incredible actors in this next film, or all of the lead young women leads in this film had never been in a film before. Um, and they are, you know, rising superstars now because this film is Mexico's entry for the Oscars for the foreign language, best foreign language film. And this film is called Prayers for the Stolen. And whew, the fact that these young actors, that this is their first time and they're so good, they're incredible, but that obviously speaks volumes about the director, Tatiana Hueso. Uh, I am just getting to know about her, but I'm so glad I did from watching her work in this film. The film's adapted from a book, but really, truly, every moment that you're walking, watching this film, it feels like it's cinema verite. It feels like you are a fly on the wall in a rural village in Mexico that is struggling with survival because the cartels are uh, constantly um, posing a danger to them. Uh, the director, Tatiana Hueso, takes on this theme of kind of ordinary and good people living in places where risk and danger are always part of their daily lives. This is this is the kind of work she does in all of her films. And she she captures the tension that comes with that danger and also the freedom that comes with people who choose to stay and live their lives and, and live joy every day. You can see Prayers for the Stolen on Netflix. Okay, now for another one of my favorites on this list. It's called The Novice. Now, I'm aware this may not be for everybody, but this thing is so well done. You will be exhausted and deeply inspired after seeing this film. You won't be entirely sure whether you like the protagonist or not, but you will definitely respect her. So the novice stars Isabel Furman and, um, and it's called a psychological thriller drama. I am a little bit of a scaredy cat. So when I hear kind of psychological drama, I don't, or thriller, I don't always do well with that, but this one I could handle. So Furman plays a freshman in college and she decides to join the rowing team and this is a woman who has always wanted to win. She is deeply competitive. She's been that way her whole life, although she's also had an experience that kind of left her hurt and harmed and that left her wanting to win even more so. And she joins this rowing team as a freshman and decides that she's going to be the best rower on the team in her freshman year. It is a very intense film um, and you watch Isabel Furman 
transform, completely transform herself in the character, transform her body. She puts everything into this role. Lauren Hathaway wrote it, directs it, and edits the film. This is her directorial debut. That is a badass right there. I, in fact, was so inspired by this film, I got myself a rowing machine. This film will inspire you, also make you think if there's something that you're a little obsessive about, it might encourage you to think about that as well. You can see The Novice on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, and Vudu. Parallel Mothers. Now this is probably one of the best known because the director is Pedro Almodovar. He's a very famous filmmaker. It stars Penelope Cruz, who a lot of people know. Um, but also I don't think a lot of people know her co-star who is Milena Smit. And um, they play two mothers who kind of very randomly end up giving birth at the same time, kind of in the same room. And so they form this bond. There's a twist, so I can't tell you a whole lot about what happens with them, but the film really follows their relationship. And again, we have this theme of intergenerational relationships, both the conflict and the joys. And what I also love about this film in general is, is I'm a big fan of stories that use history, historical context to talk about our present moment and the secondary story, but really it's extremely important in this film is about the Spanish Civil War and people who were disappeared. And so this secondary story is about Penelope Cruz finding her character, finding her grandfather's grave and excavating it so that they can give their family a proper burial. And you see these connections between birth and death and the, the ending scene of the film is really, really touching. So see Parallel Mother you can watch that on AMC On Demand. You can see it on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, and Vudu. Next, we have compartment number six, starring Sadie Harla, and I hope I'm saying her name correctly. This was a joy because I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't know if it was a comedy or a drama, so I will tell you so you know. It's a dramedy. It is uh, two characters who kind of end up riding in the same compartment on a train, on a very long train ride. Uh, Sadie Harla is in this compartment uh, on this train, a very long train trip that includes kind of overnights. And she's going to see these ancient rock formations that her girlfriend told her that she had to see. And so they planned this visit together. But then her girlfriend backs out at the last minute so she ends up doing this by herself and then her compartment mate comes in and he is uh not the nicest person and a very drunk very rude feisty man and so this film really kind of follows their relationship given that they are stuck together on this train. Harla just gives this incredible performance, one, because of her language skills alone, the ways that she manages. She Her character is, is Finnish um, from Finland, but she speaks Russian to this man. And, um, and, and also just the kind of subtle ways that the two of them end up liking each other and that's not a spoiler because it's really an enjoyable character driven film to watch and to see how they work it out how this director works it out how the actors work out the performance for them to actually like each other now, unfortunately this is not currently available for streaming but just keep an eye out for it because i'm sure it will be at some point at the very least, you'll be able to get it on Amazon uh, or iTunes. Now, this one, it's so hard for me that I didn't hear anything about this film, but I'm so glad to be able to tell you about it and please see it and tell other people about it because this film should have gotten so much more buzz than it got. But this is Catch the Fair One. And we get another film with intergenerational themes, which is beautifully done in this film. And this is a thriller. So if you love, um, for example, the TV series Ozark, you are going to love this film. It has all the same kind of 
intrigue and suspense and violence uh, that you will see in that show, except that it is this, there's this incredible badass um, woman who is Cape Verdean and Native American called Kaylee Reese. And I hope I'm saying her last name correctly, Kaylee Reese. She is a superstar. So she co-wrote it and she stars in this film. She, uh, in the film, she plays a former boxing champion. Her little sister gets kidnapped into sex trafficking and, she, and this character spends the whole film looking for her sister, finding, you know, kind of retracing how she, how she was taken. And then also very much exacting revenge on those who harmed her. And you totally buy it because Kaylee Reese, uh, the, the woman who plays the boxer is actually a pro boxer. She's a world champion in two weight classes. She's a motivational speaker. She's an advocate for native rights. She's proud of her Cape Verdean heritage. Y'all, you need to know her. She is a force. Uh, you can watch Catch the Fair One on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, and Vudu. All right, I have saved <laughs> my very, very favorite film for last, and I cannot wait for you all to see it because I can't wait to talk to people who have seen this film. It's going to make superstars out of the two lead characters. So it's called Seven Days. It stars Geraldine Viswanathan. She's the lead woman character. This film is hilarious, it's cringy, it's touching, and the film has a tiny budget. Most of it takes place in a small apartment and they still kill it because it is about these characters, their performances, their improv skills. So it's called Seven Days because it takes place just when we first had to shelter in place for the pandemic. And these two characters are on their first date and they end up having to stay together uh, on this first date that by the way is not going very well. Now similar to compartment number six, the last film I talked about, you know, to make a movie, we're going to have to believe that something may happen between these two at some point and it is well worth watching how they ultimately um, kind of reconcile some of their differences, come to accept each other. Uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, it's really, really well done. I'm laughing just thinking about it. And the great thing about this one is that it comes at the pandemic in this really hilarious and joyful way. And uh, and I, I haven't seen anything like that yet. The producers are the Duplass brothers. So if you love their work, then you will get some vibes there. But these are Indian folks, which this a perspective that at least American filmgoers don't get to see enough of. The film will be in theaters on March 25th of 2022. Again, I don't know when, when you're watching this video, but, um, but that's soon. That's, that's just a few weeks out from the making the first, you know, the first time I'm making this and uploading this video, but you got to go out and see it, support it, go and see it and support it. And then if you're not able to see it, if it's not in your city, then keep an eye out for it. And, and if you love it as much as I do, shout them out on Instagram, on Twitter, everywhere you can help this film do well. So thank you so much for watching this video and especially thank you for going out and supporting these incredible women, these badass women who gave us amazing films, performances, they wrote, they edited, they killed it in 2021 and a little bit in 2022. So go support them and uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see and give it a thumbs up for this video and others. Leave us comment, leave comments if you want. If you want to have a conversation, I'd love to know what you think of these films if you've seen them. And I, uh, my name is Fanchon Cox and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.